29,164 new COVID-19 infections were detected in the last 24 hours, taking India's total coronavirus case count since the January outbreak to 88,74,291, government data showed. The 24-hour period saw the lowest daily rise in fresh cases in over four months. There were 449 deaths registered, taking the overall COVID-related fatalities to 1,30,519. A total of 82,90,000 371 people fought off the disease so far. Meanwhile, over 8.44 lakh samples were tested for coronavirus on Monday, Indian Council of Medical Research said. According to Niti Aayog's assessment, the COVID crisis in the national capital is far from over. The unprecedented situation in Delhi worsened due to violation of COVID norms during the festive season and might further worsen in the coming weeks with cases per million population likely to rise from around 361 currently to 500, says Niti Aayog. The assessment was presented at a meeting between Home Minister and Delhi Chief Minister on Sunday. A 12-point action plan has been adopted to tackle the surge in cases. It includes increasing testing, paramedical manpower, ICU beds and other medical infrastructure required to meet the demand. In a brutal crime again in Uttar Pradesh, the body of a six-year-old girl was found dead in a forested area near Kanpur on Sunday. The police have confirmed that she was gang-raped, killed and her lungs were then taken out of the corpse by the killers. Cops said that the lungs were removed to perform black magic, believing it'll help a woman give birth to a child. The girl had gone missing on Saturday evening from the Ghatampur area while her family was preparing for Diwali prayers. The killers, who were arrested on Sunday, had removed her lungs and delivered those to another conspirator to perform black magic, who was arrested on Monday. A special committee of the Congress set up to assist interim President Sonia Gandhi is scheduled to meet her later in the evening today via video conferencing, the Hindustan Times has reported. The panel was formed in September after a stormy CWC session when 23 Congress leaders protested against the organizational working of the Grand Old Party and demanded reforms within. Though the agenda of the meeting is not clear, the Bihar poll debacle is likely to be discussed. Congress scored a meagre 19 seats out of the 70 seats it contested, bringing down the performance of the Mahagat Bandhan in the Bihar elections. After his swearing-in as the Chief Minister of Bihar for the fourth consecutive term, Nitish Kumar on Monday said he will miss working with his former Deputy Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Modi. He added that it was the BJP's decision to not field him. Sushil Kumar Modi, who's been Kumar's deputy since 2005, was not included in the Bihar cabinet this time. BJP leaders Tarkishore Prasad and Renu Devi swore in as the new Deputy Chief Ministers of the State with Nitish Kumar at the helm. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will attend the BRICS summit on Tuesday via video conferencing where he'll share a platform with Chinese President Xi Jinping. The summit will focus on cooperation in counter-terrorism, trade, health, energy and ways to offset the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on economic slowdown. This will be the second time this month that Prime Minister Modi and the Chinese President would be coming face-to-face since tension broke between the two countries along the LAC in eastern Ladakh in May this year. The last time the leaders met virtually was at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meet hosted by Russia. Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting Prakash Chavrekar on Monday said a common code of conduct for TV channels may soon be brought in. Speaking at a webinar organised by the Press Council of India on National Press Day, the Union Minister also spoke about alleged TRP manipulation by some news channels, adding that a committee formed by the Ministry will soon submit its report on the issue. Chavrekar also touched upon the absence of a regulatory body for TV channels and said a decision may be taken on bringing a code of conduct for them. Former Bengaluru Mayor and Congress leader Sampath Raj has been arrested in connection with the Bengaluru riots case. He's been on the run for more than a fortnight and was arrested by the Central Crime Branch on Monday in the DJ Hali violence case. The riot took place after a mob set fire to the House of Congress MLA Akhanda Srinivas Murthy, apart from several other properties including police stations and vehicles in the DJ Hali and KG Hali police station limits. The violence was triggered over an alleged derogatory social media post made against the minority community by Murthy's nephew. Raj has been named a key accused in the case. However, he went missing after October 30th from a private hospital in the city where he was undergoing treatment for COVID-19. Mayo Clinic researchers have discovered that administering antibiotics to children younger than two are linked to several ongoing illnesses or conditions ranging from allergies to obesity. The retrospective study analyzed data from over 14,500 children in the U.S. 
The Mayo Clinic proceedings report found that children receiving multiple antibiotic treatments were more likely to have multiple illnesses or conditions later in childhood. The illnesses are dependent on multiple factors and include asthma, weight issues, food allergies, ADHD and more. However, the lead researcher cautioned that their study shows association, not causation, of these conditions. A popular breakfast and pre-workout snack, eggs are a staple in many people's diet across the world. A new study warns that excessive egg consumption can increase your risk of diabetes. Researchers found that those who consumed one or more eggs daily had a 60% higher risk of diabetes and the effect was more pronounced in women than in men. The longitudinal study was conducted between 1991 to 2009 and is the first to assess egg consumption in a large sample of Chinese adults. The findings have been published in the British Journal of Nutrition.